lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. This week is part two of How Marriage Works with Mel and Jason. Last week was part one. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode yet, part one, make sure you go back and listen to that before this. This is a continuation of that episode. Last week, we talked about sex and disagreements and how sometimes in relationships, men can feel rejected. So we really got into it. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode, make sure you go back and do that. Today, we're going to be talking about kids and how that plays into marriage. So how does um children play into it? Like when you guys had kids, do you feel like right away it made the marriage harder because now there's other people to consider or did it make it easier because it's like wow we've made this thing together this whole person both i know it's like a kind of a cop-out maybe or you know but i mean because in one way like we had our first when we had samadhi our oldest child um i was just and i'm just remembering like i was i was I don't even want to say amazed. Like it was, it's just a, it's an amazing experience, right? To realize that, that, you know, I am part of creating a whole nother life. Mm -hmm. And then my, my, um, my, uh, respect and admiration and fascination and love for my wife grew exponentially. You know what I mean? Because I saw her, you know, okay, I was there in the beginning. You know what I mean? the very beginning, you know, but I saw her over the course of nine months, like, like literally create this person. Right. right? And then, you know, then the birthday comes and she comes out and, you know, you have this, 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 um, this, this whole other individual. Um, and I think that that, like, I think, you know, at least in my opinion, I think that is a source of, source of strength. You know what I mean? It's like, well, wow, we did that. You know what I mean? And now not only did we do that, but now we are responsible for basically creating this person, right? Because, you know, who she grows up to be will be, um, you know, there'll be a direct correlation between what we do on a daily basis and the, the, the values that we give her and, the, you know what I mean, the, and, and how we interact, how we interact with her uh, will determine how she, you know, is, you know, uh, grows up or how... Um, she ends up as a, as a, you know, as a young adult. Um, so that to me, you know, is, is a strength. I think the other side is that, um, you know, when you have children and of course we have four, <laughs> but, you know, as you have children, I think that that takes away from the time that you have, you know, with your, right. with your spouse, you know, like there, there's, you know, there are times when, you know, in fact, there are times, you know, now when like, you know, she works late, you know, I'm I'm at home with the kids. I put them to bed. I go and I'm watching basketball or whatever. And she comes in and it's kind of like, hey, Jason, you know, what are, you know, we might might interact for 10 minutes. And then she's like, yo, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Right. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> I'm tired because I've been dealing with them. She's tired because she's been working all day. You know what I mean? So that's difficult. That's something that um, that's difficult to traverse. Right. You know, and so that's something that you have to um, I believe that we have to um, be very, um, you know, uh, intentional Mm -hmm. about making sure that, you know, she and I have an opportunity to just, you know, hang out and connect and, and be who we are. You cannot conflate being married with having kids because if you're not going to have kids you're going to have one life that's different from incorporating kids into the relationship and if you have kids there's a difference between having one two three four five six and seven kids well each kid is going to add a different dimension to your relationship and your family life people need to make an informed (laughs) decision (laughs) each child that they add into their relationship just know what to expect, how it's going to affect your marriage. Um, I can say that I honestly don't feel like I had that um, type of advice or support network. Or understanding. Me. None of my yeah. friends have this many kids. And I really Nobody does. what I was like, going to. 
Nobody we, does. We like unicorns. People don't have four kids. Well, like not anymore. No, not about not about the same do, person. Not you know unless what I'm you have a farm. Yeah, you got multiple, <laughs> exactly. multiple well, baby mamas or something. Yeah, they have more. But then also, like, I hear you know people say, "Oh, I grew up in a family of twelve, or I grew up in a family of ten and nine, eight and seven. But I'm never hearing from the the the, the mother in that situation. I'm always hearing from the parent, from the kid. That's like, oh, I had a great relationship with my siblings and we did this and this and that and I, but I'm never hearing like well how the hell did your mother get through that shit and what was their relationship <laughs> like with the fucking father because I'm going crazy with these four kids so there, I, I think there should her. be one kid per parent <laughs> We were there. Once you, at once one you point, get outnumbered, yeah, we were there at one once point. you get outnumbered, I think that's where it's like, like we we ain't got eyes on all all of them. We can't. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, let me say this: that we didn't plan it that way, but like I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Like our, our oh, yeah, like they, they, no, 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 that's, <laughs> that's real shit. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 that's real shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you, and and I'm sure you, I'm sure you'd agree with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. You know, if we had to, you know, had to plan out, I'd be like, oh, okay, we're going to have two kids and a cat and a dog, you know, so pick a fence, whoop, and then we're going to take yearly trip to, to uh, you know, Cabo, you know what I'm saying, and we do this and we put the kids, but, and it, it didn't work out that way. And there, there are multiple ways where uh, having a larger family is difficult, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Be, you, know, you know, finances and just getting everybody on the same page and there's lack of spontaneity and all that kind of stuff. But then also, like, like there's a like it takes a lot of energy, mm-hmm. but they give a lot back. You right. know what I mean? Like to me, kids are better than puppies. You know what I'm saying? Like I come, I I go outside, take the garbage out, and then come back in, and my three year old. It's like I've been gone for six months. Right? You know what I mean? Like you know, like <laughs> where'd they, you go? Yeah, like daddy, go. No, no. You know, they all run to me. I'm like, dude, I just went. I just went around the corner. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, like there's there's that part of it. Like I agree with her. Like it's, it's, you know, that's something to consider because having children, particularly if you have more than one and particularly if you have multiple like us, you know, it's difficult. It's not, you know, that's well, not easy. But I, well, what- I'm, I put it, put, it, put it this way. Now that I'm here, it's worth it to me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Maybe if I knew what I knew now, then maybe I made a different so choice, what, but mm-hmm. you know. So what I just want to refine because I know you got to wrap up. What I'm saying is that everybody says what you say, Jason. So it's more nuanced than that. Everybody says. Well, what do you no. wish you would have? Such no. a blessing, and it's so much. No. It's so worth no. all the energy that you put, put out. Yes, of course it is, of course. But you know, it's gonna be like, oh yeah, I wish uh, Bobby wasn't here because I could then go out and do whatever the hell I wanted to do. Nobody says that, but at the end of the day, there's a lot about raising kids. That no one talks about. Like ever. what? No. This is something that we we kind of disagree on. And it's not, it's not, it's not because, you know, we love our kids any less, like, you know, or whatever. But I, I know that this is like a fundamental thing that, you know, she feels differently and, and I feel differently. Well, I think it's just because really we're different people. This, so maybe no, that's no, we well, are, Mel, yeah. the reason that I, I am asking is because I recently had a moment and it and it sort of scared me a little bit. But um, the girls were over, you know, they're four and six and they were like just being four and six year olds. And I was tired and they were there for longer than they usually are. And like for a straight amount of time. And I was just like, oh, man, I am exhausted. And I had this moment where like I do want my own children someday. And I had this moment where I was just like, "Okay, so wait, I want two kids. But then if I add two plus two. Damn, that's four kids. Like y- y'all are exhausting me with just the two. Like and 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 it I was like so so I really started to like do the math in my head and I was like, okay, mm. do I really do I really want two more kids cuz that's four kids. And I've never wanted four mm-hmm. kids, you know? And I was like, damn, okay, maybe I'm good with just one more once they get to an age where you, they're a little more self-sufficient, you know? But yeah, you do have to kind of think about these things and like what your level of patience is. Because I'm also not a very patient mm. person. Like I'm, am I. I'm, I'm like a when I tell you something once, if I have to tell, I'll tell it to you twice. If I have to tell you a third time, like somebody's going down. Somebody's literally going down because I don't like repeating myself because I already sa- I said what I said. You know. Right. So I think you have to evaluate that. Like some people are super patient and can say things ten times. Like 
you know, like I, I've just I've never I've never really been that person. Like, you know, I'm I'm very rigid. I'm like a military person. Like there's a rule. Mm-hmm. The rule is stated. It. It's it's said the consequences. Like do the rule. Yeah. You understand what the consequences yep. are if you don't fall. So yeah, like for a person like who thinks like that, it 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 will be very hard, I think, to like have to deal with that on multiple levels and multiple being like more than more than one or two or three, you know what I'm saying? So, so like you have to those things do have to be considered. So what so I feel like you're similar to I am. I feel like the way Jason was raised, I feel like he's definitely a more um a person that kind of goes with the flow. Right. And I can say that because I know your mom. You know, I know her personality, I know just how she relates to you and everybody else. She's like, Oh, what's going on? Let's go with the flow. And I know that it takes a lot for you to really get to the level of anger. Whereas I am just like, I will explode suddenly and scare everybody around me Mm -hmm. and people, you know, now the kids kind of laugh and are like, oh, what's wrong with, what's wrong with her and kind of joke with him. But, you know, it's, 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 it's not, I will react to something because of the amount of children and noise in the room (laughs) and how it grates on me and it'll just make me just be like, shut up or get out of here or whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Whereas, um, you know, maybe if I did have two kids, my kids would be older at this point. Both of my, I have two older kids, I have two young kids. So mm-hmm. I would have two older kids. They would be doing different yeah, 10 and things, 12 right? Yeah. Than the younger kids are. But now we have four kids that two of which are, have a lot of attention requirements. And then the other two are doing their own thing. They're pretty self sufficient. Sometimes they intermingle, they fight. You know, the two, the younger two are always needing attention. So, it is a lot for me personally and physically is a lot of stimulation and it really gets under my skin. And I'm not saying that that would prevent me from conceiving and having those children. But what I'm saying is that when you are a single person and you don't have kids and maybe you didn't help, you know, I think a lot of people were instrumental in raising sisters and brothers. Mm-hmm. Like that. I didn't have that experience. So you don't really know what you're getting into. Right. You don't know that not only are you sacrificing your time and who you are as an individual, but you're also testing the very core of who you are as a person. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not being... No, 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 I'm not. I'm sorry. Like, I'm I'm sorry. I'm like everything that. that you said, oh, well, you know what? I would not do this or I wouldn't tolerate this. That is just gone. Like, that doesn't apply anymore. You're a human being and your right. kids are humans. And you... They're going to test you in ways that well, you cannot control. And it's no you different than, control. like you said, about, you know, different human beings. You know what I mean? Like, my my, my children, they're four different, totally different human all of beings. All are completely you know what I mean? they're, different, yeah, which is really yeah, scary. Because yeah. I've heard people say that. I never really understood that. But they're all Yeah, they're totally individuals. Different. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I can understand that. And there, and there are times that I, that I get, you know, I'm I'm, I'm generally more, more patient than, than Mel is. But... You know, there are times that, that I get, you know, frustrated and tired and I'm just like, you know, <sighs> exhausted, you know what I mean? And, you know, and, 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 you know, this, this overbearing, but, um, you know, again, like to me, it's kind of like, you know, she said with the 60, 40, you know, or the 70, 30, like the, the amount, the, what I, what I get from them, you know what I mean? The amount of, you know, just, you know, the, you know, I don't want to sound cliche, but you know, love and pride and and admiration and hope. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, you know, an anticipation. You know what I mean for what these people are 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 gonna be and mm-hmm. and seeing you know where they've come from and where they're going. You know, even my three year old. You know, seeing like her personality emerge. Mm-hmm. You know, to me that is uh, to me that's worth it. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't know if she's like, oh, yeah, well, anybody would say that. And that's probably true. You know what I mean? But, you know, like, that, I, I truly believe that. Mm-hmm. Like, I really, really, really get, you know, like, like my, my father passed, it was like eight years ago, ten, almost 10 years ago yeah. now, 10 years ago. You know, and what I lament the most about it, and I talk to this dude every day. You know what I mean? Like, every single day, you know. But what I lament the most is that he won't get, an opportunity to see my children grow up right. and likewise that they won't get to know the person that I knew as my father. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. So these are the kinds of things that I think about when I, when I'm, you know, when I think about my, my kids and, you know, their futures and where they are. So, you know, um, you know, my mother, you know, I had an older brother. My, my, my brother died when he was like seven. So I was 
like six months before I was born. And when I think about like her experience, I always think about like, how would I feel if one of my children, you know, my son is nine now, if he right. just ceased to, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, for me, you know, and I think about like, you know, because I, I, I think about when I talk, <laughs> when I think about him and I talk to him or whatever, like I'm always thinking about, Okay, what's he gonna be like when he's fourteen? What's he gonna be like when he's fifteen? What's he gonna be like when he's twenty five? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like those kinds of things. And I, I just think that that, to me, like that, you know, and knowing that I have a part in developing this person, and you know, uh, you know, putting him out in the world or whatever. I think that you know, to me, that's worth it. That's right. worth all the you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, look. Let me just be clear because I, I'm not saying that it's not worth it. I'm saying that it's, it affects you in a way that maybe you don't expect when right. you actually do have kids. And I also have a similar experience where I really appreciate. Um, I look at I look at my I look at my older kids now, and I think about when they were babies, and it's just to me it's amazing that they become the, the persons that they are and have developed into the you know kind of independent thinking type of people that they are and who they will be as an adult but um you know that for me is not it's not like a weight like a scale where i'm not weighing like in the balance it wasn't worth it etc i'm talking about as a as an individual as a human being kids have an effect on people in different ways and so i feel like for me i feel like a lot of the, the things that kids trigger in me i thought i could be able to manage but it's really difficult for me Mm -hmm. to manage. And I have to rely a lot on him to kind of, you know, clean things up or center me into a place where I can actually deal with the stress because Mm -hmm. it's very, for me, it's for me, it's a physical stress. Right. Mm -hmm. That's hard for me to deal with. And so um, I'm just saying for those of us who feel like, you know, we're in control, we have everything together and, once we have kids, we're going to do this, this, and this, and yeah, this is how the kids are going to act. You have no control over anything. You have no <laughs> fucking control. Like people don't understand how Why little you control you have. And <laughs> for a person that likes like to be in control of things, like, exactly, that's a scary thought. Like just last night, actually, a friend of mine was telling me about a situation with her daughter who's older, and I was like. Hell to the no, no, no. Like, if my kid ever. And she was like, you say that now, but you have no kids idea. are going to change you in ways that you don't think about. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be more accepting than you thought you would. And I, I hope that's the case. No, it is. Because I'm, I'm also the type that I'd be like, you want to live with your grandma in Jamaica? Okay, you want... Okay, go, go no, right. no. Guan. Test, to Guan, test me, test me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not playing. Like, I think I will scare myself as a mother if my kid don't act right. Like, if you act right, I think we're going to be good. Like, I think it's like, okay, you get it? You get what I just said? You got any questions you want to ask? We got anything we got to sort out? Oh, we good. Okay, cool. But you, you want to act crazy? Go mm-hmm. ahead. Test yeah. me. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, they will, and you'll say things that you that you you, you can't believe you said, and that kind of looks like your mom would be like, "Who do you think you are, little girl? You can't talk to me like that." My mom used to say that to me all the time. Who do you think you are, little girl? Who are you talking to? And I'll be like, oh, "She sounds so stupid. I wish she wouldn't say that." I don't think of myself as a little girl. But I say that all the time to my kids. Do. Who do you think you are? <laughs> you better da 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 da, or I'm gonna do this. And so you gonna hear that. You gonna hear yourself saying things. But I don't really regret anything that I do. I what the one thing I do regret with my kids is when they come to me and they tell me that I hurt them. I don't like that. Sage does that a lot. I he's very else. yeah. He's very very sensitive. sensitive yeah. Be like, you know what? You really hurt me when you did this. I don't appreciate this, and that makes me feel really bad. But I that's very mature, though, else. that he can come to you and say that. Well, but they, like yeah, being in touch enough have, to they, to they be have, able to understand of, that. They have a, they have a, he, he and I are he and I are mind. like we can't let stuff. Mind. I can't let stuff go. If somebody makes me feel a certain way, or if I have a point to make, I need to make the point. You can't hold them understand, and, and if they the don't understand, way. then I get it. Really upsets me, and so he's he's similar. So we kind of think on the same plane, but um, that really bothers me. If I know I hurt my kids, I know my daughter acknowledges 
when I hurt her or when I make her feel bad because she comes and she does some stuff like you do where she'll be like, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do this. Uh, you know, like I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't intend that when I said this and she'll just kind of like approach it as I don't really want to have a negative energy with you. So I'm sorry that this happened. Right. And I'm going to apologize. She's very cerebral. Mm -hmm. She is, but she's also very prideful, but Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, for me, um, raising kids has really exposed who I am in, I don't want to say an ugly light, but it exposes the most uncomfortable parts of yourself that you don't want to acknowledge exist. And you got to deal with that. And it's just, it's really hard. It, it's it's really hard. But, You're right. And then you also have to deal with the other person who is different from you. Who was who's raised different. You. You know, and I, different. for single moms, like, I can't even imagine what it's like being a single mom. I I don't judge when I hear people in the store and I hear them yelling at their kids. I don't judge that anymore because I have <laughs> like, been there. Or, or Louis no, C- like seriously, or Louis so- C- like, what did that awful kid do to that lady? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> like we've all been in a store. We hear somebody be like, "You better shut up!" Da 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 da. And you're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe she's talking to the." And I'm like. What do you do? You know? <laughs> I, I actually that awful maybe child. I did that, or I felt like doing that, and you just, you just, you just, your perception of the whole thing just changes dramatically. Right. Or on an airplane, you know, what I'm saying? you on a plane, like you feel sorry. You having kids will change our entire perception of being like on a plane, the baby's crying or whatever, because that's not, that's not, and that's what I was telling you. Like, it's not really something you can like. Our now she's about to be four. You know, she was two and she did something and, you know, the super nanny said, oh, you put them on timeout and they sit on the steps, you know, whatever, right. whatever. And so it was something like she had done something to her brother and I was just like, you know, you, you're you going to sit on timeout until you say sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, this is an individual. She's a she's a totally different person. Right. And she don't want to say sorry. So she sat there and she cried and she got up and I put her back on time. Order, and we went back and forth with this thing for like two hours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And th- to the point where her, even her, her sisters and brothers were like, Phoenix, just say sorry. <laughs> she was like, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, that's an extreme example and she's 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 very stubborn, but it just See, I'm scared so... I would have been like, well, you gonna sit on time out yeah. for 24 hours. No, and that's all, and that's what I was like, well, you just gonna sit on time out, you know, whatever. But, and, and this is just one example, but it's just, a, it's just, it's just to illustrate the fact that, you know, I mean, you know, of course, when you get married, you're marrying a different person or a different individual. But then you create four, well, in our case, four, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Totally different people. You know what I mean? Who you, you know, you have some control in terms of the values that you teach them and the, you know, the experiences that you give them or whatever. But at the end of the day, they have totally different personalities. They're totally different people. So raise your kids to be, you know, the kids could be a, a choir boy. And go to Harvard pri- private school and have, you know, after school activities and they're home at, you know, five o'clock every day. You have dinner on the table. You have a great relationship with them and then turn out being, you know, a serial killer or right. gang banger or whatever. Like you, you have some limited control over the outcome of your child's life. But I think one thing making a parent makes you realize is that uh, being a parent makes you realize is that you really don't have that much control because I can say that the people that my kids are now like I would never have imagined any of them to actually be not in a negative way but that I couldn't like I had no role couldn't have predicted that I had no role in constructing who they are they're just who they are and they're all different Mm -hmm. people and they're just gonna grow up with us and they're gonna go you know grow up with whatever values we give them but at the end of the day you cannot you're not directing the outcome you're only giving them the tools that they need to survive in this country and frankly you know they're they're probably going to be privileged in a way that a lot of people aren't and that's going to give them a leg up but i don't think that makes them a better person or influences like who they are as people i feel like everybody is the same deep down everybody has you know flaws and strengths and they just going to react accordingly to whatever stimuli that they're given so that's just my. Um, well, that's what I, that scares me. I no. think, but I think <laughs> I think. But you're in charge of sure the stimuli, right? You know what I mean. And that's you know. So, but you aren't my my my, my your kids are gonna my. Yeah, no, you're right. Stimuli. You're right. But I, I think that like so, my daughter, 
you know, she has a per- particular personality, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, I think Mel says she's prideful, you know, or whatever. But the way that that manifests itself in her life may be totally different being raised in our household as opposed to being raised in another household. Right. You know what I mean? So you do have, maybe not control, but influence. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Or how, and, 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 and she's right. Like I can't, now, you know, the way that that manifests itself, you know, in, in her life later on, like she may grow up and decide like, yo, you know, she's a really smart girl and she's really whatever, you know, she's like, yo, I, I, I want to use this to rob banks. You know what I'm saying? And that might be her thing. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> You know, I mean, that, that in that aspect, you don't have control, but you do have influence. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that's that's I, I think that's all you can ask for is that, OK, well, I'm you know, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm going to influence them this way and expose them to this and, you know, whatever. And, and you know, was it like hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah. For single people out there that are thinking about getting married. What are three pieces of advice you would give them? The, the one thing for me that always resonates is that you can't really change anybody. So you exert a lot of effort and time into and arguments and energy into trying to get someone to see your point of view and change who they are. But at the end of the day, that's not going to happen. So mm-hmm. that's the one thing that I feel um, just kind of resonates for me. And then I guess the second thing would be Spend more time with your partner, learning who your partner is, what his or her um, weaknesses and desires and insecurities and needs are. And you need to have, you need to, to dedicate a significant amount of time to that person and take away from your friends, you know, and unfortunately your family as well. Um, because if you don't, you are not showing the person that you want to be with them for the rest of of their life and your life and that you are willing to put everything that you have into the relationship. Um, I feel like a lot of people, including myself, um, sometimes get caught up in the way what I want. So, you know, after work, I want to go out. I want to have drinks. You know, I want to eat. I want to talk to people from work and just talk about what happened and I want to engage. But, you know, my husband is waiting for me at home and he wants to talk to me about my day. Right. And so you have to to always put that in the forefront and make that your priority. Um, And just, you know, know that when you go into a marriage, it's not just about I'm incorporating this person into my life. It's that I'm establishing a life with this person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be the utmost priority. And that's sometimes really hard for people or for me, at least, to, um, to remember and reconcile. Like beyond the 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 initial you know you know heart going pitter patter and that kind of feeling of being in love that you know this person is a totally different person you know what I mean and that you know I, I think the 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 having the expectation or understanding that that person is kind of like what's what's the 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 um the quote you know T S Eliot is like the Tea Party this, I'm paraphrasing like what you know of other people is only during the times in which you knew them mm-hmm. and they have changed since then. And every, at every meeting you're meeting a stranger, you know what I mean? And so no, it's not quite that, um, that extreme, you know what I mean? But just, you know, understanding that, you know, in the course of the 12 years, like she's a different person, you know what I mean? Right. I'm a different person. You know, there are things that, 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 um, that our relationship has enhanced, for the both of us and there are things that that um that that you know there are ways that she's grown outside of our relationship that you know in some ways we have to incorporate right right you know and so um i think that you know for me that's one of the the things that you know is important for me to understand that you know like she's you know she has her own you know you know goals and dreams and ambitions and 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 likes and dislikes and those things aren't necessarily the same as they were when she was 26. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I got, you know, there there was, you know, there have been times in our relationship, I'm like, well, you used to, you know what I mean? Right. And, and well, you know, yeah, she used to. But she was 26 and she was a totally different person, you know. And, and I used to, you know, but I was 29. You know what I mean? Now I'm 42. You know what I mean? And so um, I think recognizing and understanding and being, uh, you know, being understanding of that, you know, is 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 really important. 
you know, and then you, you know, you just kind of work to, to make it work out. I feel like y'all have set me up pretty well for marriage and for marriage and children. Example. I I know what I need to look out for. I need to know what I need to do. I know what I need to do in myself. I I, I feel good. I feel good about this session. Thanks for the free therapy, guys. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for having us. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. This was fun. So, can people? like reach out to y'all on social media or anything is that cool yeah. what's your um instagram yes. or facebook or however you prefer to be reach oh um my facebook what is my facebook i'm just my name right jason williamson and my instagram is j will famgram <laughs> j w i l l fam g r a m so so that tells you where i am my instagram is um, Chorizo. Chorizo, yeah. <laughs> Chorizo J. So it's the word Chorizo, C H O R I Z O, and then J. Why is your Instagram name Chorizo? That's a long story. <laughs> For a whole nother podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well thank you so much for joining tonight guys and uh, please reach out to me and let me know what you guys think of today's show you can always reach me at Tanisha Wood on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and until next time wish me love hello again my lovely listeners thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL if you like the show be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review and don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL thank you so much for supporting